I don't think free speech is a right among other rights. I think that, I don't think there's any difference between free speech and thought. And it has to be free because if it's not free, it's not thought. So imagine mostly you have to think about hard things because why think? Otherwise, if everything's going all right, you don't have a problem. When you have a problem, you have to think. And if you have a problem, the thinking is going to be troublesome because you're going to think things that upset yourself and upset other people. It's part of the necessity. It's part of what will necessarily happen if you're thinking. When you control information, you control the real world. They affect the real world in absolute, in real time. They are genuinely affecting the reality that people live in. They are not just a company. They're not just a social media platform. It affects absolutely every single person on the planet when it changes who is elected. I don't want to comment specifically on Hunter Biden or the laptop. I would never kill myself, but I don't think it's fair that they would hide certain key information that close to an election. And the fact that they've done that was done specifically to affect, to affect the world that we all live in. And we all have to suffer the consequences of those things. So to sit and say that these companies can just do whatever they want, they're private, etc. No, free speech is beyond important for democracy. It's important for the reality that we exist under. So what happens is when you censor an entire side of the argument and only allow one side of the argument to have a voice, you are changing reality in real time. You are shaping the world. The only reason that scam continued as long as it did, and the only reason people didn't get to see their own parents get buried, and the only reason people sat and mass missed cancer appointments because they were scared of the common cold was because they were censoring anybody who said anything contrary to the purported version of events that the mainstream media decided they want the entire world to swallow. It's beyond simply interesting, and it's beyond simply uh, funny or coincidental. Mostly, you think in words. Now, people also think in images, but I, I'm not going to go into that. We'll just leave that aside. But mostly we think in words. And so we use a mechanism that's sociologically constructed, the world of speech, to organize our own psyches. There's always going to be one group of people who are extremely unhappy, but I think that anybody who's perspicacious enough to understand the truth of what's been going on in the world recently will know that the left and their narratives have certainly been protected for a very long time. And the universe has swings and balances and God often restores balance to the universe and perhaps it might swing the other way for a while. I truthfully am a person who believes that all points of view are extremely important because as soon as you block points of view, you have absolute tyranny. When you reach that level of adolescence in your mindset where you can't handle any point of view that is contrary to your own then you're truly a broken person and that's what the internet is purporting it's very interesting you said about twitter being tribal there's a large contingent of people on twitter who simply cannot handle reading an opinion which differs from their own and that yeah. is a degree of immaturity that we do not need adults to be functioning with in the modern world i think that everybody needs a voice to a degree and social media platforms are now the most important platforms on the planet they control information and they influence real world decisions and they influence people's perception of reality. The last few years of COVID have been a perfect example of what happens when you censor one side of the argument and you only allow one point of view to be purported by the matrix in and of itself and that's how you end up in tyrannical situations. When you think you have a problem, so you ask yourself a question and then answers appear in the theater of your imagination, generally verbally. So that'd be like the revelatory element of thought. And that's very much prayer-like in some fundamental sense because it's very mysterious, you know, the fact that you can pose yourself a question and then you can generate answers. It's like, well, why did you have the question if you can generate the answers, if the answers are just there? And where do the answers come from? Well, you can give a materialist account to some extraordinarily limited degree, but phenomenologically, it's still the case that you pose a question to yourself in speech and you receive an answer in speech. Now, it can also be an image, but forget about that. I've read enough history books to know that the people who do the censoring are never the good guys. And they've been censoring a lot of arguments for a very long time in the name of good. They are weaponizing virtue and it's always in the name of tyranny. Anybody who is out here trying to silence an entire side of an argument on any subject, whether it's COVID-19, immigration, anything else, they are the evil people who are out for absolute mind control of the populace. You have a right to free speech because the entire entirety of society depends on, dis, depends for its ability to adapt to the changing horizon of the future on the free thought of the individuals who compose it. 
think what's important is that free speech is the number one weapon against absolute tyranny. And although you cannot have complete free speech because then conversations completely break down into asinine insult fests, I do like the idea of the changing of the guard when it comes to control over information.